What makes a good guitarist? What are the top five traits of great guitarists? And what can we learn from all of this? Hello and welcome to another video with me, Elmo J. Karjalainen. and it's good to have you along. I hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to look at what makes a good guitarist and what can we learn from this. I have top five traits. I'm sure there are a ton more and you can leave stuff in the comments if I missed any. But let's just dive right in. The first one, I just have a question for you. Is it easier to learn something when you enjoy what you're doing or is it easier when you don't enjoy what you're doing? I'm pretty sure you answered it's easier when you enjoy something. Like for me, I don't like math. I didn't like math at school and it was really tough for me to learn, like read for a test, study for a test, uh, because I didn't enjoy it. Contrast that with playing guitar. I really loved learning to play guitar. Consequently, it was much easier for me to do. That's not to say it's easy, we'll get frustrated and all that, but uh, the whole thing in general is much easier. Where am I going with this? This has to do with strengths and weaknesses, or interests. Generally, we enjoy learning stuff that aligns with our strengths more than weaknesses, and all the great guitarists, I would wager, have focused more on their strengths, their interests, than on their weaknesses. That's not to say that they've ignored their weaknesses, at least not completely, but to a large extent, they might have. So let's take an example. Let's say you're wanting to learn metal. <laughs> And your teacher has you learning sight reading. You might struggle with that, unless you're really interested in sight reading. But for me, that was the case. I, I was learning sight reading when all I wanted to do was basically shred. So uh, it becomes easier for you to learn when you do something that's aligned with your interest, something that is a strength. And don't just take my word for it. This is something that I haven't invented. This I heard Steve Vai talking about this and I thought it was extremely interesting. And the thing about this is as well, when you focus on your interests, your strengths, that's part of finding your own voice, part of finding your own identity. So that's number one. Focus on your strengths and what interests you. That way you'll have a much better chance at achieving something. Point number two. I am surprised at the amount of top guitar players who can't do this. What was I doing there? I bent a note and then I added vibrato. So bends and vibrato. That's the difference between a piano player and a guitar player. We can bend the strings and vibrate them, which is basically bending the string. and. There are so many otherwise good guitar players out there who just don't have this fixed, nailed down. So how do you do all that? Well, first of all, you play with your ears. Ow. No, you listen to what you're doing. That's the whole thing. You play with your ears. Like a violin player. The way I do bends and vibrato is that I think of this. I have a firm grip with my thumb and then I think of this as a door hinge kind of thing. I don't push with my fingers, I just do vibrato. I have longer explanations of this elsewhere. And then if you're doing vibrato you try to keep that in rhythm. You can practice bends by, if you haven't done that, you can do it with that kind of thing. It helps to record yourself or film yourself, that way you notice what's good and what's not and so on. Number three. Have you ever noticed how none of the good, really good guitar players need to use auto-tune? That's because they have good relative pitch. Their ears are in order. Now it's been said you can't get uh, perfect pitch once you're an adult and that's, I don't know if that's true, might be, but you can improve your relative pitch. Relative pitch is the ability to hear different notes in relation to other notes and hearing if it's in tune and so on. Now how do you improve this stuff if you don't have good relative pitch? Well, one great way is to transcribe stuff. Ditch that old tab. 
And I don't mean you have to write down what you are transcribing, just figure stuff out by ear. Start with something easier, like happy birthday to you if you don't know how to play that. Just start by trying to figure that out. Listen to it, search it up on YouTube, and then you start gradually trying to... No, that's not it. So you transcribe stuff, the more you do that, the more your ears improve, really the better your relative pitch. Another way is to sing what you play. And it doesn't have to sound great when you sing it. That's not the point. Ba -da -ba. You can sing it after, or you can sing it before. Ba -da -ba. Or you can sing it while you're doing it. Yeah, so when you improve your relative pitch, your playing becomes much better because you're not out of tune and because out of tune is just basically not very nice. Although out of tune is probably better than out of tune. <laughs> Number four. What do we do when we talk? Well, one thing we don't do is this. No. We don't just go on and on and on and on. Although I do know a couple of people who do that. <laughs> but in general, we don't enjoy listening to someone who just goes on and on. We talk, we take breaks, we use phrases. Hmm. And it's much better to listen to someone who can connect phrases together so it's fluid. And the same goes for music. Same goes for guitar playing. First of all, you don't just want to constantly go... <laughs> Non-stop, non-stop, no breaks, that's no nice. And it doesn't even have to be fast, but it makes it worse. Also, you don't want this. See what I'm getting at? Phrase, stop, think. Phrase, stop, think. You want it fluid, but you don't want it a constant kind of blah. Phrasing. Connect your ideas. It's like talking. We don't shout all the time and we don't do it constantly. We take breaks. And that's that should be the aim with playing guitar. Making it fluid. Phrasing. If you want to check someone out who's brilliant at phrasing, Listen to Jeff Beck, absolutely brilliant. Then there is number five, and this just might be the single most important thing. And I'm gonna borrow from sport here, because uh, <clears throat> sport and music are very different in many ways, but if you want to become a top musician, there are very many similarities to becoming a top athlete. Look at something like soccer or football, as most of the world knows it. I'm not talking about hand egg, which they play in the States. Any sport is filled with people who are technically very good, but they haven't reached the top. Why? Because they don't have this bit fixed. What am I talking about? Determination, the mental side of it all. You will meet roadblocks, you will get frustrated. That's when you continue going. That's when truly great Guitar players or athletes or whatever are truly measured. It's easy to keep going when everything is going well. And you can become technically quite proficient, even though you sometimes give up when it gets too difficult and do something else and then come back later. But the truly great ones are the ones who, regardless of what's going on, how difficult it is, just keep going, are determined. You will get frustrated. I used to say to my students, if you get frustrated, put down your guitar, go outside, scream all the profanities you want, and then come back. If that's what it takes, do that. You will get frustrated, but be determined. If you don't have that, I don't care. You won't become a top, top player, be it in sports or music. Also, on the whole mental side note, you need to have goals if you want to become a top player. I've talked about this elsewhere.
you need to be able to take criticism. So you take uh, criticism that is rubbish and just brush it aside and take criticism that's, that has a point, is constructive in some way. You take that and go, yeah, I could do that better. Without being like, oh, I'm not good. Having a balanced outlook on your playing. And also not just thinking, yeah, I'm the best. Yeah, I'm the bee's knees. That's not good either. You need to have a balanced outlook on it. And like, like I said, also not, I'm not worth anything. And I'm pretty sure that all of the guitar players that you like, that are really good, have enjoyed the process of learning. They've had fun. Kind of goes back to number one, working on your in interests, your strengths, rather than your weaknesses. Remember to have fun with it, despite the frustrations, despite it sometimes being a rough ride. If you keep these five things in mind, especially one and five, you'll get pretty far. I think learning guitar is partly what to practice, mostly how to practice. If you want to watch a video on how to practice, there's one here. If you already know that stuff and want to know what to practice, there's a video here. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you consider supporting the channel via one of the links in the description. But above all, I hope you have a nice day. Take care. See you. Goodbye.